You're listening to Popstar Conversations, taking you inside with your favorite musical artists. This week, we are sitting here with the very beautiful singer, songwriter, multi-talented Jesse J. Jesse, welcome to the show. It's good to have you here. First of all, um, I'd like to ask you about your new album and the title track, Who You Are. Would you say, in a way, that that was your manifesto? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I feel like Who You Are, it glued the album together and gave it a kind of purpose. And for me, the album title represents exactly what I wanted the album to be about, which is be true to who you are and the kind of difficulties that you go through, you know, in life and... A kind of my album for me is a representation of what I've seen in the last six years in life and kind of written songs about stuff that's personal to me that I know other people can relate to. This album was six years in the making. It was, yes. People like to joke, Jesse J, 100 years in the making. But yeah, no, I did. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, why did it take six years? But the way I see it is that as soon as I was signed and I started writing for my debut album, until the second it got released, I was still writing for it. I never stopped and kind of tried harder when I was writing for the album or when when I wasn't writing. For me, as an artist, you're working to put out your first debut album. So whatever you're doing, it goes towards that. And so for six years, I've been writing towards it. And Big White Room Stand Up, Mama Knows Best, the three songs that I wrote six years ago that carried on through to this album. So I don't think the consistency ever stopped. I wanted it to be as strong as it could over the six years. Wow. If you've been writing for six years, you must have an incredible amount of songs in your catalog. Yes. I wrote over about, I think... There's over 600 songs on my iTunes that I whittled it down to 14, yeah. So there's a lot of content. Doesn't mean all of it's good. But yeah, there is a lot of songs that weren't used. Jesse, musically, who are you influenced by? It seems there's some Mariah Carey, some Motown, some Stax records. Uh, it seems like you've covered like a really wide variety. I grew up in a household that was very kind of eclectic musically. And um, my mum and dad would listen to a lot of soul funk music, which is kind of where I get my, you know... I don't know, my stanky face, as I like to call it. And I was obsessed with big vocals, you know. Growing up, I was listening to Jenna Trading, Tracy Chapman, D-Train, Funkadelics, Prince, Michael Jackson. And then as I grew older, obviously, there was people like Justin Timberlake and TLC, Lauren Hill, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. Um, and I was just kind of obsessed with massive voices. And I think that teamed with my love of musical theatre kind of, I think, influenced my sound. So would you say that songwriting is uh, therapy for you? Oh, it's everything for me. You know, I as soon as I'm feeling a certain way, I want to write a song about it. And um, I feel like if you don't let things go in how some people like to go to the gym and run it off. Some people like to paint. Some people like to draw or, you know, dance. And I'm somebody that luckily you know can I, and able to sing and write songs and um i've always felt that an apology is the is, is strongest in a song form you know um telling somebody i love you is the strongest in a, in a song form um admitting you was wrong is the strongest in a song form for me and it kind of lets me let go of it you know but it always exists There's, a song lasts forever so the song who's laughing now it uh, has some kind of um hidden meaning there it sounds like you were bullied at some time in your life but did you did you have a hard time as a kid well not a hard hard time but i mean i was bullied i, I had you know just like everyone else you get picked on and there's always that group of kids that it's funny now because at the time you obviously feel like the silly one and the one that has the insecurities and is but you actually begin to realize that it's the bullies that have the insecurities and that's why they do it and I think that's the kind of message I'm trying to, to say is that just let the weak ones be your strength um, and don't ever let anybody feel that you know they can get the better of you um, and I always say that haters team up because cowards need company. And I, that's what I say. That's what I want people to listen to and who's laughing now and realize that you can always turn a negative into a positive. Speaking of schools, was it even true that you were kicked out of the school choir? They didn't even let me in the school choir. People say that I got kicked out. I wasn't even allowed in it because I was too loud. And the music teacher said that the other teachers were complaining. So, sad times. Can you imagine? I was 11 years old and was told that I wasn't allowed in the school choir. And I was like, 
I will, I will succeed. And he's laughing now is to all those people, my music teacher, the guy that never believed in me, all the teachers that would tell me to shut up, all the kids that bullied on me, you know, people that, you know, would be not very nice to me and not really like my music. And then all of a sudden when I was doing well, would creep out of the woodworks and want to come to gigs and pretend to be my best friend. And that's who that song's about, you know, all the people that didn't believe, the non-believers. Well, I'm sure they're believing in you now. Your song, Do It Like a Dude, there's been speculation that people think that it's about men bashing. Is that true? Not at all. I mean, not once do I actually say that I hate men or I hate boys or the song doesn't actually say that at all. I think it's just what people perceive it as. And it's a woman, you know, me singing Do It Like a Dude. It's like initially people take it as a, it's kind of bruising the, the ego. But no, not at all. It's about equality and the fact that no one should ever intimidate anybody into feeling like they can't be someone or do something. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I think stereotypical that are still different with men and women and for me I've had a lot of male egos in my life that have made me feel like I can't do things as well as them or you know they're more powerful than me and you know you have to have balls in this industry you know not physically but you have to emotionally feel like you know what I can get up in front of 10,000 people or I can make a speech on national TV and you have to be able to do it you don't get training for it you just have to be able to have the confidence to do it and do it like a dude is my middle finger up to the industry but also you know it's it's, it's fun it's, it's a parody it's a tongue-in-cheek kind of stereotype song about girls being able to do it like dudes you know there's a lot of things that guys do guys sleep around and you know say they've got this and that and cars and this girls and da, da, da. but if it was girls that were doing that it's a totally different story so that's the point i wanted to try and make i would say that you do come across as a very strong woman yeah definitely i think that when you when you're when you when you put yourself in the limelight you have to embrace being a role model and you have to be able to know that you're teaching you know, young, old, whoever, the people that want to look, if people want to listen to my music, they're going to want to take something from it. And I'd much rather young kids sing, it's not about the money, 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 and realise that I also took the mickey out of myself from the Do It Like A Dude video. You know, instead of, I got my girls, I'm like, you know, and for me, it's all about taking risks, you know, and, and price tag and do it like a dude, I think were so different and it was a risk to take, you know, to start with do it like a dude and then I wanted to do price tag and, and the next single in the UK is Nobody's Perfect and I want to kind of slowly but surely give a little more, you know, I want people to still feel like they're discovering you know, little gems and mysteries about me. I don't want to give everything away, and I definitely don't think Do It Like A Dude did that. Yes, that song definitely gave you your own individuality. Right. You have another song on the record, A Big White Room, and it appears to be quite the opposite of what we just spoke of. It's a very personal song. You were hospitalized when you were 11 years old uh, from some sort of heart problems. Did that situation have a severe impact on you? Oh yeah, I mean it would. I mean it's it kind of it affects me, and it, you know I want to. As I said, you know I have to be an inspiration to people that have disability or feel that they can't live their dreams because of health issues, and that's not the case. You know I had a minor stroke four years ago, and you know I'm still here now. You know traveling the world and living my dream. And big white room was something that I think is a is a very it, it's a it's a good proof of the fact that I write songs about things that happen to me for therapy you know that that situation where you know I watched that young boy pray for four hours and then he passed away the next day it stuck with me for what I don't know six years and um, I always wanted to write a song about it but I knew I had to wait until I was old enough to, to do it properly and Big White Room was the first song that I wrote and um, it's kind of my comfort blanket now you know it's become the song that feels like it's the core of my beginnings you know it's the core of my journey and I want everything to stem from that and that's you know and that's why I recorded it live on the album because without my fans and without the belief and that you know the beauty of knowing that it's real and it's raw um none of none of the rest of my career would have happened you know big white room was a song that I put online that people helped me spread you know they spread it they they sent that video out and um yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that that was the first song I wrote. With all that you've been through, do you take extra care of your health? Oh, yeah, but doesn't everyone? Everybody should take extra care of themselves, not just because I've got a heart problem, but because, you know, life should be a healthy one. And um, for me, I mean, I have to make sure I get sleep and I don't drink, I don't smoke, I will never touch drugs. Um, and, you know, I have to make sure that 
I stay sane and happy and I see the people that I love on a regular basis to make sure that I'm not, you know, because 80% of my life now is on the road and it's very different to what it was. Um, and also 8% of my life isn't singing, it's talking about myself and I miss singing and so I've got to make sure because singing is my drug, you know, performing is my drug and if I don't get it, I get antsy. So, yeah, to make sure that I'm always performing. Sounds like you really got a grip on it. The song Mama Knows Best, it seems to be about your parents' advice. Is it uncool to admit that sometimes our parents are right? No, gosh, no. I mean, no, my mum and dad brought me into this world and they're two of the most amazing people in my life. And I think, again, it's become a too much of a thing where people go, oh, my mum and dad, they were kissing. And it's like, oh, I'd much rather my mum and dad be happy and be in love and still be together than me kind of, you know... They're, they like at the end of the day they're two people that have you know chosen to be in love and I wanted to write a song about however much I sometimes don't want to believe they're right that most of the time they are and that's what Mama Knows Best is about you know my mum always saying mm, he's not good for you or she's not good for you and me going no they are and I have to trust my mum and dad you know they're the ones that brought me into the world and I owe it to them you know so yeah. Has your life changed with all the success you've been having? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been, you know, you can never prepare for what happens, you know, and I don't think anyone can understand the lifestyle you you have to kind of all of a sudden live until you live it. You know, it's it's my whole kind of everything that, that kind of was normal to me has been taken out from under my feet. You know, I used to love just walking down the street and in the UK, I can't do that anymore. And um, just being invisible you know, is actually sometimes the best thing in the world. But I love my job and I love, it's just about adjusting and embracing it and getting used to it. And, you know, I have a lot of people following me taking pictures and a lot of people writing things about me and a lot of people asking me personal stuff. And it's crazy because for me, it's all about the music, you know, and I just, it's just something you got to get used to. I'm just young and I'm just trying to enjoy it and make sure that I don't take it for granted. Jesse, how important is fashion to you? I've heard you describe your own look as ghetto chic. Ghetto chic, yeah, I like to call it ghetto chic i am um, with my two nails missing at the moment um i don't know fashion for me it's not like you know the penultimate thing where it's like if my you know if i kind of started wearing jeans and t-shirt the music would still be as good but would people buy it you know style has become so important um but it's not it doesn't define me it's just something i love you know i love style i love dressing up i love lipstick and i love you know strong haircuts and i love crazy nails and i love big shoes and that's just me but you know i'm happy to kind of take the makeup off and you know and, and for people to see that i'm not afraid it's not like i'm hiding behind it um but i'm a girl you know it's the best thing is like getting dressed up every day well the ghetto chic's definitely working with promoting the record and traveling and touring how do you find the time to write a song for someone like Miley Cyrus or Alicia Keys? Well, Miley Cyrus, the part in the USA was actually, I wrote it for myself. And um, it was when I'd just been signed to my US label and um, it just didn't feel edgy enough for me. And it was so early in the beginning of kind of what, who is Jesse J on the kind of second album after the first label went bankrupt um, that we kind of decided to pitch it to Miley because she was looking for a track and uh, she loved it and I think she she took it to a level that I could never have taken it to and she put my name on the map you know as a songwriter with Claude Kelly and Dr Luke and um yeah, it, I think songwriting is an, is, is an incredible you know gift to have and I feel like I'm still in the baby steps. I'm still in the beginnings, you know. I, I've only been writing songs for, uh, what, six years. But that doesn't mean that I'm the most amazing songwriter, that every time I sit down, I write a hit. It's not the case. So um, I have to make time to write 10 because then I get maybe one good one that I can work on. Um, but songwriting is great because you never master it. You know, it always evolves and changes. And, you know, Who You Are For Me is probably one of the best songs that I've written. Um, some people would disagree. Some people think Rainbow is or Do It Like A Dude. And I think it's just a taste. So songwriting is great because you can do whatever you want with it. Well, truly, you're definitely a real artist. You're writing, you're performing, uh, even looks like a little producing maybe going on in your future. And I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more from you. Jesse, all the best to you. And thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks so much. Thank you again for listening to Pop Star Conversations. Be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the red bell so that you'll be notified of our next exclusive interview. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for listening to Popstar Conversations. Please join us again for another conversation with your favorite musical artist.